G'day viewers, welcome to another Creaky Gamers Historical Battle Report and uh, we've got France versus Russia here uh, Napoleonics, uh, La Salle second edition rules we're using with some uh, homebrew modifications for the AI so the Russians are defending uh, they'll have 250 points using the army builder rules and the French are attacking with 300 points so loosely following one of the scenarios in the rule book but uh, the uh, Russians have got two of those uh, two Fletchers, the uh, defensive positions to hold. So they're the main victory points. But also um, either side could have a sudden death victory by breaking the enemy army. So they're both uh, about six uh, victory points. So six units lost and the army will be broken. But we'll see what happens along the way. I'm using the advanced general rules, but I'm also using some of my custom uh, artificial intelligence. So the AI generals do have some special abilities just to give them a bonus. Okay, so I'll put up the Russian army list. You can have a look at it. But uh, the first brigade is commanded by this guy, and he is an artillerist. So when uh, bombarding, he can reroll failed to hit roll. So that'll give that... Uh, artillery a bit of an advantage and the cnc that you can see there he is charismatic so he can they can reroll failed rally attempts so he can gallop around uh if there's a move order uh, the commanders can move as well that's why i'm just going to play it uh, just to give it a bit of character to those particular units so the first brigade has an artillerist for their commander okay and then the uh, second brigade uh, he is steadfast, so they can uh, re-roll the combat results of one or two when they're defending. So that uh, will add some defensive bonuses to that uh, brigade. And uh, makes sense that the commander of the Jaegers will be a disciplinarian, so they don't add a complication for difficult terrain or interpenetration. There's not much woods around, there's bits of scattered terrain, but there's only a couple of bits of woods, so it's not going to really do them much good. But uh, that's what they have. And the cavalry commander is valiant. So they can reroll uh, ones and twos in charging combat when they uh, initiate a combat. Okay. Okay, so just having a look at the Russian uh, defences. So the first brigade is deployed up here. Uh, the second brigade is deployed there. The Jaegers are here. And the cavalry is in the rear. So they can go either direction depending on what the French cavalry are going to do. Okay, so we'll have a look at the French army list. And they've got uh, their first brigade is the guard and the Swiss, which are here. So these, that's the first brigade. That's like the reserve. They have some artillery. Uh, the second brigade is deployed in the middle. That's the main attack. The third brigade is up here. Uh, the French dragoons are up the back there. And the French hussars are on the other wing. So... The French are going to have to perform a frontal assault. And so the uh, French commander, which is me, I am Marshal Ney, he has um, the change formation uh, command ability, but he also he is charismatic. So he can reroll failed rally attempts. Sounds the advance. It is the momentum phase. Okay, so starting turn one, uh, momentum phase, the French have got eight momentum and the Russians have got six. Both sides have decided to keep their charismatic generals for the intervention phase. Step two, the skirmish phase. Okay, that picks up the skirmish phase. A massive bucket of dice. And we'll sort those out okay so the uh, russians have rolled eight eight sixes and the french have only rolled four so that means that the uh, the russians have a skirmish advantage of two two lots of two which will give them two extra momentum so the russians will also start with eight momentum and they will uh, be going first oh yes i must do something it is the intervention phase. Okay, so as you notice, the intervention phase, I've just made it slightly different where the brigade commanders are on the table and they all have abilities on the AI side. And um, when we place our commander-in-chief, 
he's allowed to move around a little bit in the maneuver phase. If someone moves, he can move around a bit. That's the only slight difference. Otherwise, you're just going to place your CNC on the table uh, within four base widths of a unit, and he influences that unit or a group of units around him. Similar, just that I'm allowing them to move around. Here is a time for action. It is the orders phase. Okay, so the AI has a priority, and the first priority is to bombard. So if they have artillery that's loaded, they will bombard. That's their first priority. And then it goes down the order, volley, rally, charge, if the enemy has more disruption, move, change formation, pass. They're the sorts of things that they will do. I do have a more advanced AI that I'm working on, but I'm just sticking with this basic for now. And I'm going to be... So the Russians will spend one momentum to... Uh, do a bombard, which is a global order, and it cannot be interrupted. So the artillery up in the fleshes have a nice uh, column target in front of them, so they will fire at them. Okay, so the bombard order, they uh, the heavy battery rolls five dice when bombarding. That has a range of 24 base widths, and we're definitely in range. So they'll hit on fours. And the... Uh, general is an artillerist so they will re-roll their missed hits so they've got four hits and a re-roll so four hits so four hits on uh, that uh, column moving up there okay so they've taken four hits in their french line so four plus is their result so four dice to see so they actually take one actual hit well done lads Okay, then the other battery will uh, fire at uh, that uh, brigade in column in front of them there. I'll just get my measuring stick so you can see which one I'm actually firing at. So, probably at this one here. Uh, they're all same. They're all the same. So, fire at them. Uh, it's got the same number of dice, but no re-rolls this time. It's only a, not a heavy battery, and there's no artillerist commanders around. Hitting on fours. Oh, four hits, four hits again, and then testing the resolve of those guys, four plus to actually convert them into hits. Two hits on them. Okay, so it looks like the Russians don't really have anything they uh, want to do at this stage. Their priority would be to volley uh, and maybe rally and charge, but nothing's really happening, so they're going to hand over initiative to the French. Okay, so as the French commander, I have this irresistible urge to send my cavalry forward, but I'm going to resist that urge and start off with a bombardment. So I have my own artillery, and they happen to be pointing at the defences up there. And we're going to try, I know it's probably silly, but we're going to try a bit of counter-battery fire. Okay, so I'll spend a momentum to do a global order, which is the bombard. And all my artillery, so we'll start with these guns from the 1st um, Brigade. And they'll fire at the guns up in the fleshes up there. Okay, so they're reserve artillery, so they'll hit on fours and they re-roll ones. Ooh, they've got uh, hit on fives actually, sorry, because of the cover. So they've got one hit and they've got a re-roll. So another five maybe? No. Okay, so they've got one hit. And the uh, resolve of the artillery is... Come on, I'm going to need some luck here to get rid of some of this artillery or do something. Give me a six. Oh, close. Okay, so the battery from the 2nd Brigade, it's just a regular foot battery. And it will fire at the guys up in the defences there. Um, just a field battery, four dice... Hitting on fours, but the cover will give them fives to hit. Um, and no re-rolls. Whoa, well, that's a bit better. Three hits. Let's get the big blue dice out. Oh, that will do. Um, and so the resolve of those guys in there, they are lined. So the resolve is four plus. So four plus to actually do a hit. Ooh, and they got two hits. All right, so those guys take take a two. Where's my little dial? There we are. Two hits on them. Okay, so both sides have exchanged artillery fire. 
Uh, the French now will, what will they do? Oh, we could volley, we can't volley, there's nothing to shoot at. Um, so we may as well start moving. That's actually the second brigade, but anyway, you get my meaning. Okay, then I'll spend another momentum and I'll move up the, um, the third brigade. Okay, so that's the uh, third brigade moved up. You might have been saying, oh, what about bounce through fire, which I forgot. So I've come back, I remembered it. So the unit behind, the cavalry are behind these guys. That's the line of the artillery coming through. The bombardment tool would come through here. So uh, there's a chance that these guys, these uh, dragoons at the back here might get hit as well. They get hit on sixes. So we'll do that. And missed anyway. So no, no bounce through hits, which was good. Didn't make any difference, but I did remember it. Okay, so then the French are going to uh, move the 1st Brigade this time. It's going to cost them uh, one. Oops, other direction. It's going to cost them two momentum because uh, there's going to be an interpenetration in there as well. So the Swiss are going to move through the gun. So that's them. All right, so the French with three momentum left. They want to hang on to some just in case the uh, the Russians move up. So... I think the uh, the French will pass at this stage before things get a little bit too hectic. Uh, <clears throat> before they hand the initiative back, the uh, the French will change formation. So it's a global order, and um, it can't be interrupted because there's nobody within four. So they're just going to change formation because I'm worried that the Russians will move up and catch us in column and have a better uh, chance of getting off some good volleys on us. So, they're just for sure. Yeah, so I just use the tree to prop those guys up. They keep falling back down the hill, but the uh, first brigade has changed formation. And the second brigade will now uh, change formation. So that's them. And the third brigade. All right, so they've changed formation as well. Okay, so they've all formed line because I know that the Russians have so much momentum left that they could move up in line and then out uh, shoot us with uh, a volley, which could be quite devastating. But now if they do move up, we can interrupt and volley. So we've got them uh, hemmed in, I hope. Okay, so the Russian AI, they can't volley and they can't bombard. They could rally, so their priority next would be to rally. But there may be some more casualties if they do move up into musketry range. But uh, so they're going to. OK, so the cavalry have got uh, one option. They can come up here, but there's a lot of nice open ground over here. And the the French have got their hussars. So there's a bit of open ground out here. So they, they have the option to commit one way or to commit the other direction. I think the most logical place for them to go is around in this direction here. Okay, so the Russians have decided that they're going to uh, move their Jaeger up. So they're just going to get in the way of the cavalry, so they may be able to move the Jaeger up. Uh, their commander is a disciplinarian, and so uh, that means that they ignore uh, complications for difficult terrain. So it only costs them one, two, four, for manoeuvring in the terrain. Keep their... Okay, that's the Jaeger moved up. Okay, so I'm going to move the cavalry up. I am denied about that, but I think that's probably the most uh, logical solution for them. It didn't incur a complication now that the Jaeger are up out of the way. So the cavalry are on the march. Yeah, so what I was worried about was the um, Russians moving up, forming into line, or they're already in line, so moving up getting into volley range and uh, putting a lot of disruption into the French lines. So we'll uh, see what happens there. Okay, so the Russians' next priority will be to rally. They will rally. I don't think there's going to be too much volleying going on, so they're going to rally and uh, try and recover some of that disruption. So they're issuing a rally order, and remember that the commander-in-chief is charismatic, so he can re-roll failed rally attempts, and he's within uh, command range. Okay, so they've got two hits on them, and they can re-roll, and they're rallying on threes because they're not near the enemy. They rally both off. 
things difficult for the French. So those guys rallied off those hits from the artillery. That's unfortunate. All right, so there's no charge going to be happening. And uh, they could move another brigade, move up into musketry range. They could... Uh, They've got plenty of movement happening, but the enemy can interrupt. So their best bet is to just wait and see what the French are doing. The French aren't moving any closer. Um, so they might hand over initiative to the French to see if the French are going to move up. So the French being caught, being going to play it cautious for now. They're going to, they've only got two left, but they're going to spend one to do a rally. And these guys, they've got uh, one hit on them. They're not near the enemy, so they'll rally on a three. But also, uh, Ney is charismatic, and so they can also re-roll. So they rally their hit away. And then this brigade, uh, battalion, brigade, whatever you want to call it out here, has got uh, two hits on them, I think. Yeah, two hits on them, but they're not near the enemy, so they don't have any re-rolls, so they'll rally on a three. Oops. So they'll rally on a three, get that dice out of there, and they rally. So a successful rally on both sides. No casualties anywhere. The French have got one momentum left. They're going to pass because they don't want to get caught short, so it's over to the Russians. They've got a few options for the uh, Russians, but they're on the defensive orders, so I don't really want to do anything too aggressive, but they are going to spend two momentum because they've got plenty. And there's not going to be any uh, real combat this turn. And this unit's going to do an interpenetration and move forward. So these guys, they're in line already, but they're just going to move through and swing around here so that they are supporting the Jaeger in their advance. They can leave those guys behind in the cover. So that's that brigade. And the other two battalions, they'll just stay where they are. So the Russians down to two momentum. They don't really want to move up as the French have kept a momentum for a volley. So they will. Oh, they've got two left. And two's going to cost them the cost them two to move through the terrain. So they'll their next priority would be to change formation, maybe. Uh, so they'll change formation with the Jaeger. Okay, so they're doing a global order, changing formation, and the Jaeger just want to form out and get into line over on this flank. Okay, so there they are, formed out into a line. That costs them uh, one momentum. Point the Russians will pass, and so the French have got an option to move up their cavalry, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, so they can either move up the Hussars or the Dragoons. The Dragoons have decided not to move up. It's going to be the Hussars are going to move up. Uh, the, the Dragoons are a little bit worried about the bounce through of the artillery. They've got, they can move uh, six, but that's going to cause a complication. They just scatter terrain, so they're just going to move up. Plenty of movement to get up. Okay, so the Hussars have moved up, and the Jaeger have got something to think about, but they do have some cavalry support coming. So the French are out of momentum. They've run out of puff for this turn. And the uh, the Russians have moved everybody they want to move. There's not much else they can do without causing a complication. Uh, a bit of rough ground they would go through up on this flank here. Um, and the cavalry have moved and everything. So the Russians will pass and that will be the end of turn one. So now the status fails. Check for victory too. Okay, that's the end of turn one. So that's the situation. The uh, the French have moved up, but I dropped them out into line because I was worried that the Russians might move up and get a volley off us on us while we were in uh, column, in mass formation. So it's all going to happen on turn two, I think, pretty much. Uh, it's going to start to get interesting. Is the situation after turn one. So the not much really happened. A little bit of uh, artillery fire. Uh, ineffective because both sides managed to rally um, and things are going to get interesting on turn two I think uh, so stay tuned for turn two I'll put that up soon so thanks for watching uh, if you got any comments let me know if you got any ideas for a LaSalle AI um, I have some ideas myself but I'm working on it but this will do for now
so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time bye for now